Welcome students. In this video, we are going to study derivatives. Let's, let's start with the definition of derivative. Function f prime defined by the formula f prime of x is equal to limit when h is approaching to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is called derivative of f with respect to x. Uh, the domain of derivative of f consists of all x in the domain of f for which that limit exists. Now we defined derivative. We can express, finally express our equation of tangent line using derivatives. If we'd like to find the equation of tangent line to f of x at point x zero, uh, we have to follow the following steps. First, we need to find f at x zero. Then we need to find derivative of f and evaluate it at point x zero. So we need to find derivative of f at point x zero. That is going to be slope of our tangent line. If you'll recall from our previous lecture, uh, that is exactly definition for a slope of a tangent line at a point x zero. Uh, all right, now, um, and finally, we need to substitute the value of a slope that we find uh, into the following equation here. We can also now define instantaneous velocity using derivatives. So instantaneous velocity of our point at some arbitrary uh, time t is defined as limit when h is approaching to zero of f at t plus h minus f at t divided by h, uh, where if you recall, uh, f of t defines our function for a position of our point. Now, um, a function f is said to be differentiable at point x zero. If the following limit exists, f prime at x zero is equal to limit when h is approaching to zero, f at x zero plus h minus f at x zero divided by h. If f is differentiable at every point, of the open interval from A to B, then we say that it is differentiable on open interval from A to B. And similarly, um, it is differentiable on the intervals of the form open intervals from A to plus infinity, from minus infinity to B, and from minus infinity to plus infinity. So we say that function is differentiable everywhere in that case. All right, now um, let's take a look at that definition again. Uh, so if that statement here is, is satisfied, if that limit exists, then our function is differentiable at x0. However, this statement contains quite a bit of information to it. First of all, we see f at x0 appearing here. It means that value of our function at x0 should be defined. Uh, secondly, this is two-sided limit meaning that one-sided limits or a li so limit of this function here when h is approaching to zero from the left side and when h is approaching to zero from the right side. So both of these limits should exist and should be equal to each other. So this single statement here uh, contains uh, a bit more information to it. All right, now let's take a look at a couple of examples where our function is not differentiable at some particular point. Uh, so here we have uh, two cases. First is a corner point at point x zero. So if we take a closer look at, at our function near that point x zero, we can see that the slope of function, the slope of derivative, uh, the slope of tangent line at that uh, of our function at that point changes its direction. And second example is a point of vertical tangency. We can see that the slope of a tangent line where we are approaching that point x zero uh, becomes vertical one, meaning that, uh, meaning that the limit which defines the slope of tangent line goes to infinity. It, it is more clear in the following graphics we have provided here. Uh, so let's take a look at and see what's happening to the slope of a tangent line near that point P. Uh, so let's select some point 
Q that is different from P. And let's compare the slopes of second lines passing through point P and Qs when we are approaching to that point X0. We can see that the slopes of second lines, they are different. So the slopes are not equal to each other. In other words, this two-sided limit here doesn't exist since those one-sided limits, which are defined by the slope of second line where we are getting closer and closer to point X0, uh, they have different values. So that when we have a point where our function is not differentiable, of this type we call that a corner point. All right, now a second example is when we are have <clears throat> a point of vertical tangency. Let's again select some other point from our point P, uh, point Q, and let's start moving our point Q closer and closer towards P. As we can see, the slope of second line in that case uh, goes towards infinity, meaning that this limit here doesn't exist. And uh, this is another example uh, where we have a slope of our second line going to minus infinity. This is again, another example of vertical tangency. Okay, now, um, so let's decode those, let's elaborate a little bit more on those one-sided limits here. Um, so limit when h is approaching to zero plus, basically, if you recall here, h means the value of x minus x zero uh, is approaching to zero from the right side. So basically, it means that limit when a x is approaching to x zero from the right side. So if you take a closer look, let's say of on one of our uh, examples here, then this here defines in, let's say this example, then that here defines um, a limit, one-sided limit, right-sided limit when we, are when we are approaching point x0. And that defines the limit of a slope of a tangent line. Now let's take a look at the following theorem that establishes relationship between differentiability and continuity. If function f is differentiable at point x0, then f is continuous at that point. However, that statement in other direction is not going to work. If function f is continuous at x0, it doesn't mean that f should be differentiable at, zero, at x0. So being differentiable is a stronger statement. Let's prove that theorem. So first of all, from f being differentiable at x0, we know that the following limit exists. Limit when h is approaching to 0 of f at x0 plus h minus f at x0 over h. So that limit exists. And we need to use that to show that f is continuous at x0. To show that f is continuous at x0, we have to show that limit when x is approaching to x0 of f of x is equal to f at x0. Uh, let's replace, uh, let's rewrite that statement in the following form. Limit x minus x0 is approaching to 0, f of x minus f at x0 should be equal to 0. Uh, we can slide in f at x0 inside of this limit here, uh, since we can see that it's invariant of x. So that limit here tre treats f at x0 as a constant. Uh, now let's replace x minus at x0 as h. Uh, from this, we also have x is equal to x0 plus h. So we can rewrite this as limit when h is approaching to 0. So basically, I'm trying to bring this into the following form. A limit when h is approaching to 0. f we said that 
x can be replaced by x0 plus h, x0 plus h minus f at x0. Okay, now uh, let's also divide and multiply everything by h. And we need to show that this is equal to zero. Okay, uh, what do we have now? We know that this limit here exists since f at x0 is differentiable. So this is basically this limit. And that limit is equal to zero. Uh, since, uh, so that limit is equal to zero, meaning that uh, we can split up those two limits. So we'll have uh, f prime at x0 multiplied by limit when h is approaching to zero for h, which is zero, so this is zero. Um, so we have shown that this uh, limit here is equal to zero. In other words, we have shown that limit when x is approaching to x0 of f of x is equal to f at x0, meaning that our function is continuous at point at x0. Derivatives at the end points of an interval. From definition of derivative of a function, which is defined as the following limit, we know that this limit is two-sided limit, meaning that the following one-sided limits should exist and be equal to each other. We call this left-sided limit as a, a left-hand derivative of f of x, and this limit here is defined as a right-hand derivative of f of x. Then if we are talking about differentiability of a function at then let's say closed interval from A to B, it's not necessary that function should be differentiable uh, at point A. In other words, it's not necessary that function uh, should, the following two-sided limit for derivative should exist at point A. To show that our function is differentiable on closed interval from A to B, we need to show that it's differentiable at every point uh, inside of this open interval from A to B. And then we need to show that appropriate one-sided limit for derivative exists. Uh, in that case, right-hand derivative at point A and left-hand derivative at point B should exist. If we wanted to show that function is differentiable, let's say at uh, an interval where it's open on the left side and closed on the right side, uh, we don't need to show that this right-hand derivative at point A uh, should, we, need, we don't need to show, we do not need to show that this right-hand derivative should exist at point A. We only need the requirement that uh, left-hand derivative at point B should exist and the should, function should be differentiable at every point of open interval. Uh, so basically, uh, let's say that uh, let's find more about differentiability of the following function on interval from A to B. Uh, then since our function is not defined at point A, uh, then uh, this right-hand derivative when we are approaching point A is not going to exist since, as you can see, we have this term here. And if F at point A is not defined, then that limit is also not going to be defined. Uh, then we can show that it's differentiable at every uh, point. Let's assume that it is smooth and differentiable at every point of open interval from A to B. And let's assume that our function at point B is defined and that left-hand derivative exist at point B, then we can show that our function is differentiable on an open interval from A or, or on an interval from A to B where it's open on the left side and closed on the right side. And finally, we are going to conclude with other derivative notations. Uh, don't get surprised if you see notation of derivative in one of the following forms or limit definition of derivative in the following form where instead of h approaching to zero, we use delta x approaching to zero, 
or simply big delta approaching to zero or small delta approaching to zero. All these notations can be used to define derivative. All right, guys, that concludes our lecture on section 2.3 on derivatives. Uh, thanks for watching.